Welcome into LAFC Black and Gold. We are at the LAFC Performance Center. We are in the midst of training as the team gets ready for a very important final stretch of the season. When I say final, they have seven games left, four at home. So get out there. If you haven't had a chance to get home, do it and do it now. I am Max Bredos, and I'm thrilled to be joined by two guys who have covered the team intimately all season from the Southern California News Group, Josh Gross and Francisco X Rivera, who just wanted me to introduce him as my friend. Everyone wants to be your friend. Well, <laughs> that may be true. I don't know. That's up to you guys. But I've known these both, both these guys for a long time. When I saw you guys working for, the, for covering the club, I was very excited because I could hit the ground running as I arrived here. And we've seen it from the beginning. And it's been a fun season, Francisco. And I'll start with you as we, we look at where LAFC stands with these few games left. And uh, when you look at the teams that they're chasing, the teams behind them, where do you see this Western Conference race? Well, there is no doubt that the FC Dallas losing team. They've lost, they've only won two out of the last six games. And I'm a very firm believer of the fact that you have to ha have some momentum. You have to be in a role if you want to get to the playoffs in good form and if you want to go all the way. And I think Dallas is not doing that right now. Only seven games left. You have to start winning if you want to get to the postseason in good form. LAFC struggled a bit. But they're at the doing end well. Of July. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, they're doing better now. They struggle. Uh, late July, early August, some injuries, international duty for some players. But now, it seems that Bradley found that chemistry. The team looks more coordinated. And you know what? It's a very winnable schedule, Josh, at this point. Yeah, no so, doubt about it. At the beginning, you want to make the playoffs. Now, LAFC's probably got some aspirations to finish as high as they can. So how high, how high could that be? Well, definitely in the top two. I mean, I think this team is shooting for that. And um, I have a feeling, as you read the tea leaves, that decision day game against Kansas City is going to be for that bye game. I mean, it really feels that way for the top two seed. And if Dallas slips, perhaps even for the one or two seed at that point. But I think you're looking at teams like Portland, which still has a game in hand. And Seattle has been uh, incredible. They are the form yeah. team. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. So um, I think if it's hard for Seattle to maintain that the next five weeks, isn't it? I mean, that seems like a difficult thing to do. But LAFC has been consistent throughout. Their dips have really been minimized, I think, by the uh, direction of this team and what Bradley's really brought to them. And the integration of a lot of players, too, I think, has really uh, brought focus back at certain points, maybe where it felt like they would have slipped a little bit more. Uh, there's this constant churn of the season has been really good for LAFC. That's, that's a good point. It's a lot of ebb and flows to M uh, MLS season. I think if you look at LAFC's body, of work they haven't dipped too high or too do low too low as most teams do yeah. yeah i mean but if seattle makes it as you mentioned that's a team that i don't want to face in the playoffs they, they have the experience to consecutive mls finals and despite the fact that they don't have clint dempsey anymore he just retired i mean th that's a loaded team and that's a team with experience and experience to me is everything in any any sport uh, this has been a cr crazy season to cover it which i say crazy i mean exciting because there's never a dull moment with this team and one of the phenomenons we've had is players coming in even to the final weeks of the season. And that includes Lee Wynn, who joined the team midstream. And Lee, I know you have both have had a chance to talk, and I know you've talk, spoken to him recently. Yeah. He's playing against his former team, the New England Revolution, and that comes with uh, a, a lot of other baggage, for lack of a better word. No question about it. Uh, I asked him, you know, does it feel like it's far in the distance, your dealings with New England, this new chapter in Los Angeles? And, you know, he said, no, it's really fresh. It still feels fresh to him, that angst, that anger that he felt in New England. And, um, you know, a lot of players sort of will let it go with a little time and distance, some success in another place. But Lee, Lee seems to be holding on to that. And, uh, you know, so the bottom line for him, the only thing that matters on Saturday is three points. Three points settles everything for him. That it really answers all the, the questions. Slate, really. It really does everything and that he hopes to accomplish on Saturday. He's been great. Yes. Uh, he has been one of the consistent guys over the last two months. Yeah. Well, but uh, it's, it's not easy to make a positional change in your career. And never easy when you're 31 years old and when you have over 200 games under your belt and you know what when the need and when the team needed a holding midfielder he stepped up admirably and you know it's not only been a positional change but it's been a mentality makeover when you look at his body of work i love to see him move all over the field doing the dirty work in the trenches recovering possession doing anything he can to maintain a recover possession and it, it hasn't come free because you know he has three yellows uh and another red card and maybe more that you know referees have been lenient on but you know what when you are playing alongside Benny Fell Haver, you need that fire and you need that intensity to match yeah, it. Yeah, it would be interesting to see him clear this hurdle. Uh, there have been LFC players in the past that have played their former teams and had success, and you could see a little bit of a cathartic moment, I think you could say. All right, I'm gonna have you, let's have a little fun here. LFC has had a lot of surprises. Most surprising player of the season, Josh, who is it? Uh, Adamo Diamande. Up and down, he came yeah. out like a house on fire, right? <laughs> we knew nothing about him. Right, no, no one knew anything about him except Bob Bradley, really. And he comes out and, and has this amazing goal scoring record. And then he kind of disappears, but he's always under the surface. You, for this team to get to the heights that they need to, need to, to really advance in the MLS Cup, you sort of think that they need that goal scorer, that guy who can pull something out of nothing. And he was that, he showed us that, but 
is he that player or is he the guy who's been handling his hamstring issues now for a while? I don't, the answer to that question, I think, may determine how far L, uh, LAFC goes. That's a nice ace up the sleeve and yeah. down the stretch run when Dio does reappear, and he will. Well, I didn't know much about Mark Anthony K, to be honest with you. I saw this 23-year-old kid, no MLS experience. I'm like, why is he in the starting lineup? But in all of a sudden, he brings a joyful, cheeky, very fresh uh, style of play. And then it was just like seeing a, a 12-year-old playing against grown-ups in a professional soccer league, having the time of his life. And I really love seeing that from Mark Anthony Kane. You know what, early in the season, I approached him and I told him, uh, you look to me as a young Patrick Vieira. You know, tall, physically imposing player, but very classy, very skillful at the same time. Got to put a little bit of LB. He's got to put a little meat on them bones. Right, <laughs> but when he played against New York City FC, yeah. what did he do? I mean, he played the game off his young career. He earned MLS Team of the Week honors. And uh, I think he, I had to ask the question. He did talk to Patrick Vieira, and Vieira said that he was impressed with his play. So, unfortunately, we're not going to see a lot from Mark Anthony K in the next few months. He's out for the season. He can barely walk right now. He's recovering, but I'm very excited to see him develop into one of the best young midfielders in all of North America. Those are two great answers, so I'm not going to give one. But I would say uh, Diego Rossi, I thought he was going to be good, but not this good. It's been a bit of a surprise. Francisco, Josh, that was great. My friends, let's do it again soon, and let's have a little bit of fun uh, in the running here for LAFC starting this weekend. Much more LAFC black and gold after this. Talk about Bob Bradley next. As we are joined every week here by head coach Bob Bradley, and uh, interesting week. It's not, not a lot of stuff going on. It's focusing on the game in New England, but the guys are coming back uh, from a little break, some from international duty. What's the keys to hit the ground running to get ready for the game? Actually, we've had two really good weeks, uh, this being the second. So uh, last week is a little bit different because you don't have the preparation for a game. So uh, we can push training in different ways. Uh, the mentality of the group was great, it was competitive. Uh, in different moments when we were keeping score, one team would win the first game, another team would win the second game. We had golden goal to determine the winner. Uh, so they were, they were on fire with just their attitudes and the way we worked. Uh, we start this week trying to build on that and then step by step we of course focus on New England. I know they're probably eager to get on the field and a lot of people are eager to see LAFC here at home again. And, uh, there was that international break, and what stood out certainly is Andre Horta scoring a goal for the Portugal under-21s in a qualifier, uh, a game winner against uh, Wales. That is not an empty practice certainly for him. What do, you, what do you see he can take away from that, from what you saw in the goal? Confidence. Yeah. Uh, since on, Andre arrived, uh, we know that he likes to shoot from distance. And uh, in this particular case, he caught it perfectly. Uh, but it's important that when he goes back into the under-21s there that um, he earns opportunities on the field. He shows people that he's continuing to improve. So we were all very excited for him. And I think it's worth mentioning to everyone listening that the Portugal under-21s, this is fertile ground for some of uh, the best players that we've, that we've seen over the last, for, since the history of the sport, really. Some great talent. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Andre, uh, it's, it's, it's really important for him and therefore we support that idea that you know he's going to continue to, to grow as a player and uh, a great goal and a great result. So hopefully he comes back smiling and ready, ready to go. All smiles. So let's talk about New England. Uh, they are battling to get in the playoffs and they have some work to do, but they're coming off uh, one of their best results of the season on the road. Uh, they, don't, they don't get to win on the road too often. So you're catching them at a time when they're playing pretty well. What's the, the preparation like for this particular team? Late in the year, these are the kind of games that happen week after week. Teams are fighting still to get in the playoffs. You have to be ready for uh, everybody's best efforts. You expect games that in some ways get a little bit more physical. Uh, I think that throughout the year, teams watch us uh, and then 
do what they can to try to throw us off our game. And, and that includes trying to be, in some cases, very tight man-to-man, one-to-one uh, -one defending. And then that certainly includes fouling and trying to disrupt the flow and some physical play to go with it. So, you know, our ability to play quickly, um, get out of pressure, find the right ways to get forward, those are things that obviously we work on all the time but become so uh, important throughout the, the rest of the season. We have the Dodger night coming up for that New England Revolution game. Get there early and get those Dodger t-shirts. Our Javrina Catalina did a little intel while she was in Toronto, talked to, uh, to your brother Jeff, and we know Scott played baseball, and Jeff was saying that baseball was a passion for, for young Bob Bradley growing up. Uh, well, we played all sports. <laughs> uh, we lived across the street from the field, uh, the elementary school, the basketball courts, uh, and it was a different era. You just went out there every day and you played until, uh, you know, your parents uh, came out and got you and brought you home. Scott's two years younger than me, and I knew in high school that he was a way better baseball player than I was, so <laughs> that like, was an easy decision. He'll be the baseball player of the family, and we're happy we have you in soccer as well. What position would you, was your preference when you played baseball? Uh, I played uh, shortstop and second base, a little bit in the outfield. That's but, the high um, skill set right there off the guts. Well, I was actually okay, but uh, <laughs> Scott was much better. Um, he was a left-handed hitter, uh, catcher, third base. Uh, two, two very important trivia questions with Scott. Uh, he got the last hit in the old Comiskey Park. Wow. And he caught Randy Johnson's first no-hitter. That's insane. He wasn't there when Randy Johnson hit the, uh, the seagull that one time. You ever see that one? Uh, I don't that know. Was that was insane. Okay. Okay. But that's, inc that's incredible intel. And what a great American sports family the Bradleys certainly have. And uh, baseball and soccer are better off for it. And, Bob, we, we wish you luck this weekend as well. I know it's a big game. A couple home games coming up for the guys. All right, All thank right. you. Thank you, Bob. Good. Much more coming up, LAFC Black and Gold. Welcome back to the LAFC Black and Gold Show. We're here at the Performance Center, getting ready for the game against the Revolution, and there's no doubt about it. You don't have to have me say it. Latif Blessing is loved by this club. He is part of the family. You can hear it every time he comes into a game. He's, we're the family here. He has a family back in Ghana. It's been an incredible journey for him to get from there to here. We have cameras taking a closer look at that journey and where he came from and the huge burden that he has to put on his shoulders to make it as a professional soccer player. Here's a quick look at a feature that will be appearing on YouTube TV. It's like a small village uh, from uh, south, just a little village you know, where I just go from. When I grew up, you know, like poor family, you know, so like I started playing football, you know, people just encouraged me, hey Latif, you need to work hard, you know, because if you are playing hard, you will be the star for uh, this village, so I just, uh, hey, I'm going to make it, so you got to pray for me, you know, so everybody was happy to me making big star right now, so everybody was happy, you know. To watch that incredible feature in its entirety, you can see it on our YouTube TV broadcast. LAFC Revolution coverage begins at 7 o'clock on YouTube TV. Check it out. We also remember Latif from those uh, Metro commercials, one of my favorite things to see. And it is Metro Night on Saturday night, and fans will be receiving a limited edition LAFC black and gold preloaded tap card so you can get around town. Gates open at 6, they'll be available then. They are under a limited supply, so get there early. It's also Dodger night. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff happening on Saturday. Special guests will be appearing, so get there, check it out. We know LAFC and the LA Dodgers are intertwined. We're pulling for the Dodgers to make the postseason, and I know they are certainly doing the same for us here at LAFC. So as I said, we'll be on YouTube TV. And you know about the Max Plus One. Well, we have a repeat Plus One. We're very excited to have this man back. It's Warren Barton. 
Mr. Vina, thank you very much. And uh, Warren Barton, uh, after calling the World Cup, welcome to the big time, calling LAFC. Looking Congratulations, forward to it. you did it. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> he's, never, he's never been good at jokes. You're going to get never, never good at jokes. Trouble. <laughs> and you got to work with me before? We're picking up the That's why I've got the gray hair, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> got a twist. I'm just, you know what? I'm one. A cat. I haven't got one yet. I'm going to go and get my cat. You know what? Just in time. Good yeah. Oh, wow. I just the look would look kind of, you know, yeah, kind of like, yeah. kind of like, like that. Right there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Hey, by the way, all the kids are flat brimming it, so I would suggest yes, going that route. I'm good. too old to flat <laughs> Look forward to catching up with Warren. He's always a good time in the broadcast booth. We are out of time on LAFC Black and Gold. We'll see you Saturday night, YouTube TV, as LAFC take on the New England Revolution. Till next time.